them the best omen they're out here. Oh! Oh! Вместе с молодым талантом мы врываемся в эфир. У него определенно есть стиль, но покажет ли он скилл? Давайте узнаем. Вы знаете, за кем следите. Феникс палец в ультимейте на растяжке. Ему тут же этот ультимейт ломают и просто разбирают на запчасти всей командой.
Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A Talk with the Industry Series brought to you by Segi Group of Colleges. Let's first introduce ourselves. My name is Jacob. Hello, my name is Jia Hong, and we will be your host tonight. We are very privileged to have Mr. Kerwin, the Art League Manager of Veteran for Hong Kong and Singapore Studio, as well as Mr. Cyrus, the Senior Manager for, of Riot Games Hong Kong and Singapore Studio to share with us tonight. Yeah, so before we go any further, uh, let's first do a quick tech check. If you're able to hear us clearly and see us clearly, please type yes in the comment box below. That's right. If you are able to hear us and see us clearly, please type yes in the comment section. All right, so we're seeing a few yeses now. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, interacting with us. If you, are, if you want to continue interacting with us throughout the session, feel free to do so. If you have any questions, if you agree with any of the points, please do um, comment in the comment section below. Yeah, so uh, I'd also like to thank um, Illegal and Sure for powering this show tonight. Now, let us do a quick round of today's talk. It will be divided into two parts. The first part, we will be talking about the topic behind the art of Ren. And after that, we'll be going for a quick break. Then after the break, we'll be coming back and straight into the Q&A session as well as our lucky draw session. Our lucky draw winners will be picked from the registered, registered people who registered to, through the registration link. Without further ado, let's us, let us invite our guest speakers to all tonight. Mr. Kerwin and Mr. Cyrus to the show. Hi, Mr. Hi. Kerwin. Hi, Mr. Cyrus. Hi, hi everyone. Mr. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Um, thank you for being here with us. So, is everyone ready? If you're all ready, um, press 1 in the comment section below. Uh, if you're a Valorant player, shout out your main agent and uh, let, let Mr. Kerwin and Mr. Cyrus know that you are here and supporting them. Yeah. So, uh, we, we're seeing a few ladies there now. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for interacting. Uh, now, we'd like to invite Mr. Kerwin to, to, to take over the show. Um, the floor is yours, Mr. Kerwin. All right. So yeah, hi everyone, I'm Kerwin. Uh, so I, like what they say, I'm the art manager and a lead for Valorant, for, especially for premium content. So yeah, today I will be talking about you uh, and sharing to you something about uh, our project and how we do stuff, basically. Uh, in terms of uh, art, the, the art style of Valorant and uh, even some of the behind the scenes of how we produce content. So yeah, just a quick intro for myself. Yeah, so I'm the art lead and manager for Valorant, uh, both for Hong Kong and Singapore studios. And this is what people think that I do. <laughs> so you must be good in drawing things and you play games and get paid, right? Uh, this is true, but this is what I usually do. Uh, which is uh, working on 3D softwares and game engines to actually create in-game assets that uh, you use in-game for Valorant, basically. But aside from that, being a lead, I also am a, a dad, right? And I'm, I'm working from home. <laughs> and uh, it's my job also to enable an awesome team to, to succeed and be proud of their work. So, yeah, I take leadership seriously. And this is something... Uh, the, the, the picture on the right is uh, my actual team uh, in uh, Kudo, Shanghai. Uh -huh. All right. So yeah, so in terms of my career highlights, uh, I started as an intern uh, way back, like around 14 years ago. Uh, I worked on an art, uh, an art outsourcing company as a 3D character artist. Then I became an art lead. And then after that, I jumped into full game development, joining Ubisoft Singapore. And then I, which I became uh, an environment artist, a texture artist, a 3D art lead, and uh, uh, eventually, uh, you know, growing up onto the ranks of uh, being an associate art director. So these are some of the companies that I've worked for. Yeah, so I have 14 years of XP in the industry. And yeah, these are some of the projects that I've worked for as well. So some of them may be uh, very familiar to you. I hope you played them and you enjoyed them. Yeah. So yeah, these are the games that I've worked for. All right. So in terms of my current stats, uh, I'm currently working on Valorant, right? And I am a Jet main. Uh, my rank is around gold, right? And uh, a little trivia, my, my, my account, up, uh, account uh, level is uh, 197. 
and I have 39 kills on one match uh, at one time. <laughs> so I'm really, really proud of that. And I have a thousand hours uh, playing this game. So I love the game itself. I love the project that I'm working on. And uh, it's just a big blessing for me to work on something that's, uh, you know, that you're very passionate about as well. Yeah. So in terms of my career progression, I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit closer to Ro uh Ronova Zoro, right? <laughs> Which is like he thinks he's strong, but it's not. He gets defeated by Mihawk, right? To becoming like a bit more stronger, uh, learning more techniques and and this. But until now, up to this date, I'm also still aiming to improve better as a craft lead, um, as a as a leader as well, and hopefully becoming this the the new world Zoro that we definitely you know uh, super badass. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Valorant. So I hope everyone's like, uh, is there anyone who's familiar with the, with, with the game or have ever played the game? Yeah, so as you know, there's a common question, what is Valorant? So uh, Valorant is a 5v5 character-based tactical shooter wherein creativity is your greatest weapon. So the word creativity is highlighted there because we are we really want to create a platform wherein the players can actually express themselves as they play. So a good example of that is display. This is something that you won't see on other games, um, right? Uh, for other shooters, let's say like Call of Duty or CSGO. Uh, yeah, this is something that you will only see in Valorant. And uh, the, 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 we just give them the tools and abilities to do, to do this. But, you know, it's, it's the player's minds who actually creates this place, this creative place. So this is what we, we wanted for, for the game. So yeah, in terms of game positioning as well, uh, we consider our, ourselves as a tactical shooter. We are highly competitive. Uh, landing headshots is very important. Team play and coordination is very important as well. You need to have map control. It's all about getting intel, being creative about your abilities, uh, throwing smokes, yeah, throwing flashes. Uh, and at the same time, we want to build a community. So we are more highly lethal, uh, I would say, compared to Overwatch. Uh, but we are not as punishing as a, as punishing as a CS:GO or Rainbow Six, for example. So we want to make the game accessible to um, uh, as, as, uh, to a large audience as much as we can. But at the same time, we want to maintain that competitive uh, competitive spirit that uh, you know uh, and and that high level of proficiency that we can uh, offer to basically do this esport. Mm -hmm. So we want to basically, uh, you know, uh, cater the game to, to a wider audience, uh, make it uh, as, enter as entertaining as possible so that, uh, you know, uh, it will be, uh, you know, uh, it will be something that uh, everyone can appreciate. And uh, yeah, of course, if you have these tournaments and all, yeah, we will have moments like this. So I hope you guys know this one. This is the Sentinels. Basically, they are the ones who are uh, the champion for uh, Masters. Uh, for the last masters in uh, Reykjavik, Iceland. All right, moving forward. So one of our missions is to basically deliver personalization items to exceed our players' expectations and give them the means to express their creativity. So like, again, the word creativity is there, but this time around, we want to really give them a way on how to show their personality, their character using uh, you know, the, the personalization items that we, uh, that we do. For example, gun skins, uh, bodies, the things that you can uh, basically purchase in-game to express yourself. So yeah, today we will be focusing more into what's the behind the scenes in terms of like making skin lines. So before that, I want to talk a little bit about the visual style of Valorant itself. So for Valorant, we have a very distinct style, uh, which is a little bit on the middle of being cartoony and uh, realistic. So as you can see, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's very uh, stylized in a way, and uh, this doesn't only serve the purpose of being beautiful, but also in order for us to simplify a lot of elements so that we can emphasize more on gameplay and what the gameplay needs. So a good example of it is like in terms of form, we simplify a lot of shapes to be more angular, more crisp, and we eliminate a lot of higher frequency details that you see on a realistic gun. And at the same time, it's not as, uh, you know, as simple as like a cartoony model as well. In terms of texture, we want it clean, sleek, and minimal uh, in terms of edge wear. Uh, so we remove all of those gr gritty and heavy weathering. And, uh, you know, we don't emphasize on hand painting, but we, we, we actually 
go for a more uh, procedural way of making our textures using Substance Painter. And yeah, in terms of visual style, of course, we will come up with ideas. It could be as simple as like a dragon, uh, a golden dragon statue, right? And we apply it to the guns. And how we apply it is, of course, applying the visual style. Like what I said, we simplify a lot of shapes to the point that we, 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 uh, we can uh, have that, you know, uh, nice medium detail that we have to make it still inter interesting and not boring but at the same time, not noisy to uh, hinder you from focusing on shooting guys on your gameplay. So this is how it looks like. We want to maintain also the silhouettes of the gun so that, for example, you drop them on the floor, you can still recognize what gun are you picking up, right? So that uh, you can actually decide as a player within split seconds if you're going to pick up the gun or uh, you're going to stick uh, to the gun that you have. So with that's, those things are very important for us, and it actually... Uh, this is what I call uh, art serves function of the game or art serves gameplay. So this is very important when we do uh, all the guns, basically. And yeah, we apply it to the rest of the 17 guns that we actually have in game, which is what you see here right now. So later on, I will discuss to you guys more about the skin lines that we have and the process, basically. So in terms of the process, it's very, um, it's very. We, we, I simplified it to three steps. Basically, we have the ideation phase, we have the production phase, and we have the integration phase. So for the ideation phase, right, uh, I will discuss it on how we actually did it on the Celestial Collection, which has already been released uh, last uh, Lunar New Year, February, uh, in Valorant. Yeah. So I hope you guys are familiar with the content, and yeah, hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, ideation phase. Ideation for us is all about getting an inspiration. So for, for, for us in Hong Kong and Singapore studios, we are actually we actually gravitated on oh how how can we have a skin line for Lunar New Year, and we came up we, we found this like really great art from uh, Pixar basically, of their movies being stylized right and we kind of like the vibe of it and, and like okay this really fits the, the thematic that we want to bring. So yeah and then after that we create a story, uh, yeah so for example the stro the story of this gun is like. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a rumored gun wherein like the great mythical ox from uh, you know uh, because it's the year of the ox, right? It's basically you know uh, uh, you know uh, blessed these guns, and he gave them life basically. And later on, you will see why I said they gave he gave it life. So yeah, there's a little bit of surprise there that you can um, you can see later on. And yeah, and after that, it's very important for us to define what kind of emotion the gun brings as well to the players, right? So we just don't do cool guns out of random ideas, but we really think about how the, how does the player should feel when they are holding this gun. So for this gun, we specifically wanted uh, the skin line to be more lighthearted, fun, and festive, right? To, for them to celebrate Lunar New Year uh, with their friends and uh, within the game itself. And then after that, we define product pillars. Of course, uh, we identified it, and uh, we know that we need to go to for the year of the ox, right? Because it, during this year, it's a year of the ox. We cannot do year of the tiger. <laughs> we cannot do a year of the rat or any other year, or else it won't be uh, relevant, right, for this year. And then, like what I said, a key pillar as well is being traditional and stylized. Uh, you know. Uh, art style, uh, a bit whimsical, but at the same time, there is like some uh, oriental uh, influence executed through the, the colors, uh, through the gold materials, and even in terms of the lines and, and shape profiles as well. And at the same time, we want to focus on uh, giving the, the, the surprise factor for the skin line by introducing dynamism. So as you can see, we bring the gun to life by introducing animated textures, an animated shader to basically make the gun more exciting and appealing, as you can see here. So these are the early exploration and concepts that we did. And then we came up with like, oh, we need a melee. What kind of melee are we going to do? And this is where the team really like brainstormed and like come up with like really crazy ideas. And someone like found this video. Oh, this is really cool, right? <laughs> and maybe we can make you know, a melee that is a fan. So this is where this particular idea came to life. And it's still following the thematics and the core pillar that we set. It needs to be Year of the Ox. It needs to have the same art style. 
some graphic, uh, you know, and, and line structure. So this is the initial concepts that we did. And at the same time, yeah, we want to. We need also a body, and this is what uh, the body concept uh, looks like. So we want it to be cute, like what I said, sticking to the to the uh, uh, brief, which is uh, to the thematic uh, pillar, which is uh, lighthearted and fun. So these are the early concepts for the. This is for the judge, yeah, and this is the final concepts for the guys themselves. All right. So second step is to go into production. In terms of production, of course, we will work with the 3D models. We texture them. We choose the right colors. We we even you know we are very picky in terms of like how we execute uh, colors as well in the game. So even the gradient, what kind of uh, what type of color are we going to use? What's the proportion of gold versus the green parts? Is very important. And even adding like those edge wear, minimal edge wear, to capture the stylization that Valorant requires. And then, yeah, this is the step-by-step. -step. We do the base model first, right? Uh, and then once we have the base model, we spread it to the other guns, and then we build it layer by layer, adding more details along the way. So this is the progression from left, uh, from right going to the left. So as you can see, there's a lot of elements being added on. And same here. So that's the base gun on the left and going to the upper right, going to the bottom left. We're in uh, like you can almost see that like the concept is becoming a reality as of this moment already, yeah. and then we integrate it to the engine, and this is where actually we push our boundaries. We want to do uh, you know we want to surprise our players. It's, it's very important for us to actually make the game exciting through our content and like what I said uh, for the players to express themselves and be creative. So here, uh, we, we just don't want it to move, but we, we did a night and day cycle for this gun so that the, 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 the sun rises and, uh, together with those uh, you know, meteors uh, falling over. So yeah, this is a special shader. It might look simple here, but in reality, it looks like this <laughs> on the engine. Wow. So a lot of blueprints, a lot of coding, a lot of uh, you know, uh, technical stuff uh, that goes behind it. And uh, yeah. This is with the help of our technical art uh, uh, persons uh, and, and teammates. Mm. And then at the same time, we also want to push the boundaries. We want to make a body that's fun. So we did a re the first reactive body in the game, wherein when you shoot, you know this particular ox just gets angry and becomes a you know badass. <laughs> so yeah, so so that's uh, really another cute. thing that we pushed, and it was done using. Same thing like node-based blueprints in uh, in uh, Unreal, right? And then what we do usually to simplify it is just to like swap in the textures and do some 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 tra some transition tweaks over here and there to make it look uh, really nice and appealing. Mm -hmm. All right, and yeah, I'm gonna share to you guys now the final output, which is this is the co complete collection uh, for the Celestial skin line that we have released. Yeah, the guns, the melee, the frenzy, the phantom, the Ares, the judge, and the fan melee, which is, by the way, the first melee fan in the history of an FPS game. I've never seen any um, any game or any FPS game had a melee uh, as, as a fan. So that's, uh, yeah, like what I said, uh, for us in Riot Games, innovation is very important. And it's important that we just don't create stuff that players would like, but we want to push the boundaries in terms of innovation and to make uh, our players happy by introducing, uh, you know, something that they've never seen before. So this is the Phantom, some of the, you know, uh, shots, uh, other uh, other shots for it. Uh, Frenzy, the Ares, the Judge, and the melee, which looks like this in-game, basically. So later on, you will see it uh, more discussed by uh, Cyrus, how he actually did uh, the animation parts for it. All right. And this is the body on different angles. And like what I said, yeah, you, you don't want this ox to be angry. So yeah. <laughs> And yeah, we also made some uh, you know 2D content on this one. So we made some player cards to for the players to use as avatars under under the game. So we have like different samples of wide uh, depending on the UI of the game, right? So we so we need to produce this kind of sizes. 
and we also have a spray wherein we animated it as well to 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 get that you know uh, very festive exploding ampau right because uh you know who who doesn't like ampau in chinese New Year, yeah, right true so true. <laughs> so yeah this is uh, how we like uh create our ideas and yeah that's uh, all that i will uh, that i have to share for tonight so hope you enjoyed it thank you so much guys for your time all right thank you mr karin uh yeah now we'll be going on to mr cyrus right Hello, everyone. Thank you for Kevin to give a really good introduction for the project. And then like, I love his work because I think I see, I also watched the comment section. Like a lot of people really like, we really like, we really like it because they like, he do a lot of researches, like detail, everything to the gun, whatever, like display everything, right? Super cool. Compared with animation, animation is just tiny, you know? <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, let me introduce myself. Hello, everyone. I'm Cyrus. This is me, the stuntman. So, <laughs> so like, uh, yeah, I'm from, like, uh, work for, for the, like, animation industry around 20-something years. So, like, uh, start from 2000-something. So, I start working on some TV series, like, from DreamWorks. And then after that, like, I mean, around 14 or 16 years ago, I started to join game. So I work with a lot of like a different kind of title, like from Assassin's Creed, Prince of Persia, uh, from to now, like, uh, you know, uh, League of Legends, uh, Team Fight Tactic, Valorant as well. So like, uh, yeah, I'm a surf of different kind of the studio before. So currently right now in Riot, what I'm handling is like, I'm an assistant of Karin. <laughs> No. So like, uh, yeah, so like we work together to uh, produce John uh, animation and maybe sometimes like a character animation as well. So for me, I'm currently handling the multiple project, but Valorant is the one we are really focusing on. So like uh, today we go to like a really like a seem like a really less uh, content and topic here. So mostly like a character pillar, key pillar, animation style, weapon and role of F FPS. Cool. So let's talk about key pillar. So the key pillar, what, what, what we do is mostly for the characters. We want to design the characters for more like appearing. So like a let the audience say, oh, this character is really like, oh, it's part of myself. Or some I or the some of the pairs say, I really want to be that character. So the character has that kind of an iconic move iconic kind of like uh, the, the silhouette is also like really like appearing as well. So based on the design, we have, you can look at like uh, current, like uh, the image I have right now, you can purely really easy to find which character is it, okay? So when we design the character, we are really based on you, whatever color, uh, the standing poses, uh, what kind of gun he ho she holding, and then like uh, what kind of skill they're using. So I pick an example for Phoenix, right? When we like, uh, when we think about Phoenix, we have, you know, in the side, I have a lot of references can show you, okay, when you look at Phoenix, he's those kind of like, you know, like a rapper, really sarc sarcastic, like really fun kind of guys. When you look at like relevant kinds of like trailer, you can see like what kind of, what, what kind of like uh, characters he is. And you can see like, um, yeah, you look at the right hand side, the guy's like, yo, 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 those kind of guys, those kind of behavior, what is like Phoenix supposed to be? So mm -hmm. during the design period, what we're going to do, so like the animation team, when animation team will work on something like the style, like the, uh, I make a loop, sorry. So I make a lot of, quite a lot of like different kind of styles. So we know he's a fire guy, his element is fire. So we try to make a turntable for him, give him, give him a poses, give him a poses, see how his behavior is supposed to be. So you know, in the right hand side, we also like um, looking for something, eh, hello, uh, looking for something about the skill. You can see like, oh, what the skill is supposed to be, how he throw it. And then the ultimate, you can see the ultimate, maybe I can uh, full screen it. Yeah, you can see the ultimate ring. So we also like uh, look at ultimate, is it like fit with character characteristic, okay? So when you play the game, you can see when you play the all, he will just like uh, summon another him. So this is his ultimate, cool. Yeah, so, okay, sorry. Okay, so based on that, right, based on that, so we do a lot of different kind of experiment for whatever weapon, whatever weapon skills, and then like, you know, how, how, how he hold the gun as well. 
So for animation style, right? For overall animation style, we can see like in the industry, we have quite a lot of different styles, Scott and Scratch, like uh, Smurf fame, this kind of thing, but we are not going to do that. So you can see the right hand side, right? The no, you can see like Fortnite is doing something like really kind of like a realistic kind of dancing. And then like sometimes like League of Legends, right? League of Legends, we also see a lot of like, you know, Scott and Scratch in there, correct? But for our Valorant, right? As what uh, Kervin have saying, like the, we are mixing cartoony and realistic in between that. We are mixing those. So for us, when we're going more like a snappy, like are we trying to go more like a some kind, some kind of fancy kind of style for our Valorant animation. So you can see that left, right? Your left hand side, you can see one punch man, dog kind of thing, right? We really want it to be a weapon. <laughs> the thing about this weapon in the game. All right. So let's talk about weapon. Basically, how the team how we pick the weapons, how we pick, how we choose the weapon to release. The first thing is based on the developer idea. So the designer or us like curving will think about this team, this is skin line. Just now you can see the lunar, the ox like a fan, right? Something suddenly like he receive a video say, oh, let's do it. Something like that. In another thing also, in another hand, we also think about fun fact, something really funny <clears throat> and then thing you need. So we will go to a lot of different kind of community, like society, like, you know, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, see what the payer feedback. So, oh, I want something. I want something. Can I do that? Can, can we have this kind of weapon? So we will take it to consideration. So you can see like every time when we are in some live streaming, we also will consult a lot of people say, hey, what kind of weapon? You're expected. What player expected? But that's, that's also our right style, right? So we, we really care about what, what the player think and what the player need as well. So the first weapon we try, okay, so I don't really pay the sound, maybe there's some really little sound. So the, I think like everyone see this trailer as well, right? So outer frame, outer frame gun, uh, the skin line, this is the first time we try out. This is really different in the industry. So for the gun, you know, like the shooter game, right? The shooter game, no one using like the, you know, the creature at a gun. So this is the one we are trying out. Okay, we want to give the player something new. We want to give a player something different. Okay, so like uh, when the player, when the player release, right? I'm super, super, super happy, <laughs> super, super happy for that. Yeah, because it's something different, something different from usual. So we look at the design, right? We look at the design. The designer when thinking about it is like, oh, this is a dragon, so we should go for that kind of like, whoa. Uh, really like a realistic kind of like dragon style and a more dark evil kind of like a way to put uh, to 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 create the skin line so what animation do for us we give them life <laughs> this is a life we want to give it we, we give it to them so um so for us we do a lot of references so like references about like okay what kind of what kind of movement we can do for the gun for the gun and have a dragon. So at the beginning we said, oh, we should be like uh, keeping really static, like a gun, really like a gun. But at the end, right, we the, the team thinking is like, oh no, we should make something more alive, more appeal to the player. I want them to, I want them to have a wow when I'm using this gun. And it seriously look like a dragon, okay? So this like uh, the left hand side is the first player view, and this, the right hand side is the third play, uh, the per third person view. You can see like okay, our game only two hands. <laughs> they don't have a character in the back, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so this is another gun. Oh, I'm so sorry. I need to loop it. Um, I need to loop it. Make it better. So this is another gun. So I can uh, maybe I can zoom in more to let you kind of see more. Um, can I see the quality more higher or? Oh. This is the higher quality, I'm so sorry. So like, uh, yeah, this is another, another gun is an AK, the AK gun. We also like, when we are make it, we make it alive, make the same alive. So we can see like the shield around, it's like keep moving. So this is like, uh, when we are working on a gun, we really take this to consideration. What kind of thing the player want and what kind of dragon supposed to be? So, oh, I'm so sorry. Can I go back? Um, I, I kick it too fast, <laughs> I kick it too fast. So in here, we listen to a player in Reddit. A lot of kids saying, I want, I really want Butterfly Knight. I really, really want it. So we heard the scream. 
from overseas, you know, from overseas. We see that they really, really want it. So what do I do? So normally when when we when our team listen to the player, we will take a consideration. We discuss in a lot of different kind of meeting. We are going to but do a butterfly night. Okay. So what kind of knife movement we're going to do? So we do a lot of references. We do a lot of animation to test it out. And then at the end, we come up with something we are really quite happy because player is replicable. I mean like they do it. <laughs> mm. Okay. So when when we animate it, definitely we we are using a lot, a lot of references, a lot, a lot of references for our animation. So some of the game, right? Some of the games they do, right? They don't really like a following, following references. They have a lot of like a fantasy. But yes, but for us, right, we have fantasy, but we also fully reference to the like you would real life. We want, we want the player can do it. So really really happy i think this video come out like uh, the week the week uh, uh, no the two day after the skin release some players seriously do the same thing like our developer everyone look at the video we we can't we, we I, I look at the loop i look at the loop for like more than like 100 times i'm sure more than 100 times is it the same you're seriously doing the same thing <laughs> just like left right hand different so this is something like a, we really want and then like the player also really happy for it Cool. So about the work. So how when we're doing a weapon, when we do a weapon, what I felt like, um, you know, uh, uh, butterf let's say butterfly knife, right? So the melee weapon. So we have a rule. We have a rule for FPS. So why we have to push the hand here and why our weapon, what, why, why, why we don't cross the screen, you know, like sometimes we want to cross the screen for the weapon, but why we don't do that is because we have some safety zone. Some safety zone, we have to talk to the, like, let the player, when they the player doing the game, right? The rest zone, you look at the screen right now, the rest zone is the player who, who wishes the player really aiming to, because like they worry about the enemy is coming. So our weapon, our hand is really seldom to cross the screen. So this is like, a, we have some limitation when, uh, when we are working on, when we are working on some like, you know, new weapon, idol or something, you can see like we have a lot of space for the, play, for the player, okay? So you can see like, you can see like with this one of our weapon is like a circle. So it's like a circle melee weapon. <clears throat> we also like based on the, we, we also like based on the rule when we are doing it. So we don't go through that kind of like a red area to let the player can still can see, you know, the middle of the screen. In, in case uh, some enemy suddenly pop out, they, they can make a reaction for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we are working with animation, that is really important. Another thing also is talking about lack of action. So the attack, the attack line, we have to follow something, you know, we have to hit it to the center definitely, because if not, they were missing the impact, the impaction of the, the animation. And then the slash, you know, you can see the type A, type B. So you can see stacking, we, all, we can do that. Like eight, what, eight, no, Cyrus, one, two, three, four, five, nine. <laughs> So eight direction, okay. Eight direction also can step, and then the slash is like mostly like a six di uh, like three six direction, six direction. We can do the slash. So this is our uh, weapon limitation, eleven limitation. So when we are when we are talking about like you know like the slashing, right? So you can see when we are slash where where what the direction is supposed to be. When I slashing from here to here, you know, this is some kind of like a document and preparation. We will do it during the production. So make sure, making sure our, our animation, we're not crossing the screen, you know, crossing the screen and make like a player feel like annoying, you know. Mm. So also like a, in, inside of animation, right? Inside of animation, we also have some kind of limitation. What's that mean limitation? It's like, okay, when I press the button, I don't want to just, I don't want to see the animation show, man. I want click and hit. So this is like a quite like a working with, right? you know, I'm working with uh, Kervin and uh, some TD and DM designer as well to making sure when our weapon come out is enough time for the player to, to just like, you know, attack. But sometimes when you play another game, right? So you can see, ah, wait, I, when I click, they delayed it. So that's why I can't kill that guy, you know? <laughs> I'm stepping in, but I cannot because like, you know, feel frame. So what are we going to do are we limit it? So our first five frame have to make sure the 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 uh, weapon on the screen, and after that, like a twelve frame full weapon have to be on the screen. 
totally 100 frame for overlap. So in here, right, settle and trick, that's what we can do. Like in the meantime, when I'm in the blue zone, we press is attack, right? If they say attack, they can definitely attack it in that time. So maximum like a you know fail frame at the beginning only. So make sure the player feel feel that kind of agile and then like one to one uh, button clicking for the game. Okay. So in here, right, I can show you something about the third person view. Okay. So a lot of people asking me, wait, why Valorant is not like really care about third person? But something I have to tell you why. It's like Okay, when you're playing the uh, third, third person, um, when you're playing the FPS, right? When you look at a third person, you have to make sure, you can, you can see right now I'm zooming out, right? I need to make sure I know that character is Phoenix, okay? Mm -hmm. So I can't do some like big action, big changes to make sure uh, say, hey, Phoenix is supposed to be, you know, holding the fire and running around, you know? You have to be, uh, the knife, right? Attack had to be different. But when uh, when you are playing the game, is totally different. No one will look, no, not much people will recognize the animation. Most people want to recognize is which enemy in front of me, okay? So in here, right, we mostly using, we use all the animation for that person. Shooting all the different gun, like, uh, you know, handgun, AK, uh, a lot of different kind, kind of gun, right? We mostly share the animation across all the, all the character because we want to make it more standardized than the player can be easier to recognize, easier to recognize the color and then the silhouettes of the characters. So there's like, a, yeah, I, I get a lot of feedback even in the red, Reddit is like, oh man, can we like do something like maybe uh, in stack animation, we can show it in the third person. But if let's say we do it, like they will be causing a lot of different kind of like mis misleading, you're misleading. You know? So let's say you have a, you know, you, you, you're throwing up the ball or something like that. You want to do that. but. When you're in game, you see someone like holding the ball, you think he's using the skill or something. So that is like, we take a lot of consideration, a lot of consideration for the, um, for the uh, animation. Cool. That's cool. Right. So yes, again, we are doing a lot, a lot, a lot of reference. I would say like, uh, oh, Cyrus, uh, what do you do every day? I would say watch movie. <laughs> Watch a lot of a lot of video clip. I I'm a premium like a I'm a premium member in YouTube because like I keep I didn't go through YouTube all the video everything to find a lot of reference for my animation. Sometimes we also like need to shoot our reference ourselves. So I want to show at the end right. I want to show you something how our animator work on the animation. Here you go. Okay. And I... So you can see, right? Whatever the female character, she also can act. <laughs> mm, yeah. yep. Your duty is not over, my ultimate victim. Yep. So Your duty is not over. Our animator every day almost shooting themselves for different kind of variation of animation. Let's say this motion character selection, right? He also take more than like, you know, 20 take to see is it good feeling or is it is it like a correct feeling of the characters? So if they do a lot of research when we when they are doing it. You can see all the skills. I think everyone hates this skill, right? Hiding the vision. If let's say you play the game, you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. They will cover. They will cover. See, even knife. He facing <laughs> to the ground. I don't know why he's doing facing to the ground, but like you know. When's that knife gonna be a skin? <laughs> so that, that's the interesting thing, right? You, know, you, you can see like in that studio, right? You can see an animator is jumping around, you see? What what suddenly he do is like <laughs> So I so like at the beginning, I tell you, animator is <laughs> a stuntman. <laughs> it's a stuntman. They do everything by themselves. Just one thing we cannot do is like flying or some magic <laughs> auto counting. We can't do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for today. Thank you, you guys, for joining. Oh, sorry. Like he keep playing back. Thank you so much. Like thank you so much for the presentation. Thank cool. you for sharing your knowledge. <laughs> Mr. Cyrus. Yeah, thank you. That's that okay. really cool. Right now, we'll, we'll be going for our halftime break 
and after we return, we will go straight into the Q&A session as well as the lucky draw session. See you back in a bit. See you. See you. Que eu vou te botar no jeito hoje, viu, Binho? Ô, oh, dó. Já passou da hora, né, pai? Hum, vamos lá. Oh
All right, we're back. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> uh, right now, we'll be going into our Q&A session as well as our Lucky Draw session. Um, before that, we would like to in invite you all to our next session. Yeah, the next session is uh, from Sony, Mr. Lee Kok Seng, to come and share with us. And it will be the, on the 8th of September at 8 p.m. Yeah. yeah, so please do join us next week. Um, all right, so let's go into our Lucky Draw and Q&A session. Can you bring up the Lucky Draw wheel, please? All right, let's see who our first winner is. So if you are the winner, um, type I am the winner in the comments to prove that you are here and claim your prize. All right, let's see who's the first winner. Ng Kya Ji. Oh, congratulations, Ng Kya Ji. Um, be sure to type I'm the winner in the comment section to claim your prize. All right, so now let's go on to the first question from our admin. Uh, All right, hmm. we have a question from Asavari. What was the <laughs> reference for jet flying animation then? <laughs> <laughs> like animator references so basically like uh when we're thinking about like uh jazz flying animation that <laughs> jazz flying animation right <laughs> so like uh one thing like uh we we have think about like uh you know like we find like the leg at least scratching like kind of scratching kind of thing right so we are doing that kind of that kind of like uh, animation before but like um I'm going to gameplay where we have to make it more like, you know, stand like a human shape. If not, like people cannot be shooting. So you ask me like the reference of her, right? It's like just ourselves jumping and do a slow motion shooting, right? We keep like shooting our, <laughs> she keeps shooting the video and just do that, you know, the jet fighting animation. I think Kirby V really liked that, like a jet fighting animation because he's like a jet main. Yeah. Definitely, man. <laughs> cool. All right. We have our winner. Nkaji, congratulations on winning. <laughs> congratulations. Nice. All right, so we're going to the next winner. Okay, our second winner is Tan Kian Boon. Congratulations. Remember to type a uh, I'm the winner in the comment section to claim your prize and you have one minute starting now. While we wait, let's get our second question for our speakers. Uh, from Priscilla Liu Chin. What skills do we require in order to design a creator of figure? All right, maybe I'll take this one. Uh, yeah, so basically there's a, a couple of like uh, skills. So yeah, so definitely designing a character or figure, it, it goes to your uh, art fundamentals. Of course, understanding uh, basic anatomy, for example, you know, uh, that's uh, really, really important. And at the same time, of course, uh, you know, you need to have basic, uh, you know, uh, skills, either through 3D or 2D to actually, uh, you know, design or whatever medium you want to, to use in order for you to, uh, you know, visualize, uh, you know, the characters that you want to create. So it can be sketching, it could be uh, 3D prototyping, for example. It can even be, let's say, for example, uh, clay sculpting, if you're comfortable with it. So, but what's really important is that, um, uh, you know, uh, learning the fundamentals of art and uh, how to, how, what makes a great design. But I would say beyond all of those, what's really important is passion. <laughs> yeah, because uh, without passion, right, you won't have the patience to actually go through all of those learnings. So I would say that, you know, uh, beyond all of those skills, uh, what's really important is that you're passionate in what you do and you really firmly believe that this is what you want to do uh, in terms of like your career or, or in terms of your life. And you know what they say, right? If, if you're really passionate about something, then uh, you will never be uh, working your whole life. And uh, I think, yeah, that speaks to a lot of us. Like, even for me, I feel like uh, when, I'm, when I go to work, I'm just like doing the things that I do. So, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, those are my tips basically for, for that question. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So we don't have the winner. 
So we'll roll one more time. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see who's the winner this time. I think I'm the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys put my name there? Yeah, I wish I, I had my name there too, man. Okay, so our winner is Tan Kian Hong. Tan Kian Hong, you have one minute to claim your prize now. And let's see our third question. All right, from Rexy Wong. How does it feel like working with the other parts of the right team around the world? Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, both of us can answer the question. I go first. Yeah, so you go first. I go first. I think it's like this, like, uh, currently right now, we're, we're remotely, right? We're remotely and then we're with them. Like, they have a different time zone. The difficulty is a different time zone. But when we work with them, we work with them all around the world. For me, it's fantastic. You know, like uh, we have the different kind of culture, right? We have different kind of culture. We have different kind of creativity thinking as well, the design, everything. So like uh, well, for Ryder, we are really open. We are really open. Everyone can voice out their idea. Whatever, everyone can voice out solution or suggestion, recommendation as well. So I give a half path for Kirby. Yeah, Kirby. <laughs> yeah, so for us, uh, yeah, it's uh, there, there, for, 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 for sure there will be like pros and cons. like. Mm. For example, the, the time zone is one, uh, sometimes language bar barrier is one, we have different accents and it, it's just harder to like understand someone's, uh, uh, when, when someone's speaking with a, with a strong accent, right? But beyond that, Paul, actually, it, it's an awesome experience because you get to basically do something great together mm. with a great team. And uh, I would say uh, in Riot, we have very, uh, you know, like very talented people. Uh, who is who are also very humble and, and easy to talk to and for me that's what makes riot great and uh, what i love about riot as well is that we really focus on like making the players happy uh, our mm. mission is to be uh, you know the you know the the best uh, company that uh, mm. you know serves the players and and for us we don't take it lightly it's, our, it's on our core value and everyone just you know uh, just digs in deep to that uh, values and we just want to make the players happy, we we ourselves are players, and we want to experience, uh, you know, the same you know thing that uh, you know will make us happy when we play our own game. For example, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm a very big Valorant player, and when I create content, it's like you know you're you're creating a content for yourself, right? So uh, I'm thinking <laughs> like, should I will I buy this gun if uh, if I'll do it, right? So so yeah, it boils up to that sometimes, which is really uh, fun, I would say. And that makes work not really working uh, <laughs> in a way. So it's, it's, there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, it's just awesome. Uh, it's an awesome experience. Yeah. Thank you, Karin. Thank, thank you, Mr. Cyrus and Mr. Karin. Uh, we have our winner, Zaki Tan. So congratulations on winning. So yeah, for the lucky draw winners, please email um, edwardlow at segi.edu.my with your current address to claim your prize. Congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations. Now, I would like to once again invite all of you to join our upcoming live talk session with Mr. Lee Kok Seng from Sony next Wednesday. Yeah, uh, we hope to see you all there. Um, now we've come to the end of today's session. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Corin and Mr. Cyrus. We really learned a lot today. Um, I'm, I'm sure the audience also have learned a lot. So yeah, thank to the audience as well for joining. You have been uh, amazing. Yeah, so thank you all. It's thank you pleasure. so much. Thank you pleasure. so much, guys, for yeah. your time. Yeah. Pay the game. Pay the game. Huh? Pay the game. Pleasure, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pay and I hope to see you all in game. <laughs> yes, see you guys all in game. Yeah. <laughs> see you. Have bye. a wonderful evening for all in Sagi Group. Okay, just see you and bye bye. Bye bye. bye.